And welcome back to another Kraken Packs video. I am your host, Mr. Rivers. That's right. We're back with box number four of Ultimate Masters. That's right. We're going to see if the first box we opened out of our case was, in fact, the best box. This is the last box from the case. There are a couple more boxes to go. Um, I don't think I will be opening them soon or by themselves. Put it that way. Uh, one is located to my Masterful Monday series. So we'll be adding it to that pile. And the others, I don't know what I'm going to do with yet. So we'll see. I've been told that we should probably hold on to some for, you know, for later because the box prices are just going to go crazy, probably. Why can't we... All right, whatever. Let's, so let's take the packs out like so. Then we'll put the box together. There we go. Look at that. There it is. The box is together, which is always the case. So, box topper. It's last, as always. So we're going to put it up here. Right up in the corner there. You guys can all see it. And you can get the mad glare off the off the... There, is that better? Put it, we'll put it down, down here, so it doesn't get like the huge glare from the light. It seems fair. All right, first pack. Let's see what we find. We got ourselves a worm token. We got ourselves a foil hero of Liana Tower, and our first rare is an Urborg, which is not a bad little rare. All right, pretty nice rare to start on. And we got nothing super exciting there. Oh, see, this is going to mess me all up here. Let's put this over here. Because I normally stack my commons and uncommons over on this side. Like this. Yeah. Okay, but we can put this down here like that. There. That's better, isn't it? And then, so then we have foils here. Rares. Mythics. That good stuff. Let's get right into things here. All right, we've got a foil Twins of Mar Estate. And our first mythic, which is a temporal manipulation. Not like the craziest huge hit mythic that you want to see, but it's still a pretty decent mythic. I mean, who doesn't like taking extra turns? Kitchen Finks is a very good uncommon. Forbidden Alchemy. Snake Umbra. And that's all she wrote. That's all she wrote. We got a zombie token, a foil flight of fancy, and our rare is a disrupting shoal. Worth about a dollar or two, something like that, I think. Appetite for brains, angel of despair, and furnace celebration. All right. What are we looking for? What are we looking for? We still haven't opened up a Leovold. Now, we did get one from a very nice patron. Corbin, he sent us one, but we still, you know, we still haven't opened one, so we might open one in this, who knows, we got a subline, a sublime archangel, because love is what she's got, right, I think, swift reckoning, garner the blood flame, and hero of Leah Tower, all right, so, so far, this box is, meh. It's kind of... Oh, we got the Merry Liege token, though. I'll keep that off to the side. We got a Foil Reckless Charge and Squee! Miss Vale Plains, which is not over a dollar anymore. Rally the Peasants and Ghoul Steed. Good old Fiery Temper, though. It's a good one. Homunculus. Foil Rune Snag. That might be something. I'll have to check and see. Well, we got an All is Dust. That's a pretty good rare as well. I think it's over the $5 mark. I don't know exactly where it's sitting these days. We got a Dreamscape Artist, Sigil of New Dawn, and Brawn. Treasure Cruise on top. 
All right. What do we think? Are we going to get a hit or miss on the box topper this time? I don't know. What do you guys think? Foil Desolate Lighthouse. Well, that's not the foil rare that you want to see, but it's a foil rare. It's a foil rare. Oof. And Raging Ravine. Oof. That pack was very disappointing, wasn't it? Song of the D Damned, Living Lore, and Young Pyromancer, who is, I believe, about a dollar still. Man. What a pack. One of the... Probably one of the worst foil rares you could open. Well, maybe not the worst, but pretty close. It's pretty low end. Crushing Canopy. Daybreak Cornet. It's a pretty good rare as well. Worth a couple bucks. Firewing Phoenix. Reviving Vapors. Chainer's Edict. A very good uncommon as well. Alright, so our foils have been quite lackluster. The Rune Snag probably being the most interesting one if of any of them at the moment. We got a foil, Death Denied. And we got a mythic, Platinum Empyrean. Alright, well. No Goyf, no Liliana. No Snapcaster, no Cavern of Souls. We got Golgari Thug, Hero of Iros. Nothing super exciting in the uncommons there. Got that Citizen Token, which looks sweet. We got that Unholy Hunger Foil. And we got a Glen Alendra. Well, that's not a bad little rare worth a couple bucks counter squall not worth over a dollar anymore i don't believe circular logic and anger oh that was a very good uncommon pack like that pack had some very good uncommons in it what do we got here soldier token foil molten re uh, molten birth we got a maelstrom a maelstrom maelstrom pulse holy moly it's a good good rare eternal witness very good uncommon as well rogues passage and urban evolution all right we're about halfway through the box now we've hit two mythics we're probably not going to see another maybe we see a third mythic if we're lucky and maybe we see a second foil rare if we're lucky scuzzback marauders and we got a gorio's vengeance that's a good hit lava spike about a dollar i want to say i think it's around that mark Swift Vengeance, or Swift Reckoning, I should say. Sleight of Hand, also a pretty decent uncommon. Nice to have it in Black Border. We got a Zombie. We got a Penumbra Worm Foil. And we got the Lava Claw Reaches. Look at that. Uh, those two lands go together right there. That's the perfect place for them, right? We got Buried Alive, Penumbra Worm, and Blast of Genius as our uncommons in that pack. Oof. It's starting to look like that first box was probably our best one. But I mean, like, hey, I'm not going to complain about opening our best box as our first box. Phyrexian Tower, pretty good on, pretty good rare there, too. Worth over $10, I believe, still. Spider Spawning, Rise from the Tides, and Brazen Scourge is our uncommons. All right. What do we think? Do we think we're going to hit a second foil rare? Do we think we're going to hit a third mythic? What do, what do people think? Olivia's Dragoon and Rhea Dawnbringer. Also, not over a dollar. We got Unstable Mutation, Unbur Unburial Rites, and Prismatic Lens. Also some very decent uncommons there in that pack. Elemental Token, Foil Dawn Charm, and Vexing Devil. This card was like quite a bit of money when it was... Uh, you know, being used in, like, mono red and stuff. I think it's come down to, like, you know, a couple bucks. But it's still not a bad little rare. It's, um... Yeah, I mean, it's a 4-3 for one mana that they can just take 4 damage if they want to kill it. But, I mean, if you're... If, if on turn 1 you're dropping that and your opponent's taking 4 damage, you've just done 4 damage on turn 1. That's not something to be ashamed about, especially with, a like, a red burn deck, probably. Vengeful Rebirth with the amazing art by Seb McKinnon. I want this on a playmat. That's all I ask. I would like this art on a playmat. Spirit Karen, uh, Karen, Mystic Retrieval. All right, we're down to the last third of this box. What are we thinking? A foil Reckless Worm. That might be something. I'll have to check that. And we got a Spoils of Wo of the Vault. Stream of Consciousness, Conflagurate, and Meringue River Prowler. All right. We're still missing, like, some of the big hits. Engineer Explosives, uh, Noble High Arc, like, whew, Stitcher's Apprentice. And we hit 
our third mythic, and it is a Machaeus, the Unhallowed. Would be nice to hit some other uh, mythics from the set, um, since we're, we're definitely missing quite a few of them. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to complain about hitting a third mythic in the box, since it's nice to hit that third mythic mark. Rakdos Shred Freak. And Demonic Tutor. All right, that's a pretty good one. Pretty good one. Shriek Ma, Become Immense, and Grave Strength. All right, so we've hit a fairly decent number of, like, rares over the, you know, 5 to $10 mark. Demonic Tutor, of course, being, I think, probably the highest cost rare that we've opened so far. We've got a Homunculus with a Foil Slum Reaper. And Stirring Wildwood. Well, you can hang out with your buddies over there. Dawn Charm, Rolling Thunder, Hero Virus. All right, we got four packs left. Four packs left. What are we going to see? What are we going to see? Drake with a foil Crow of Dark Tidings. We got a Dig Through Time as our rare. Desperate Ritual, a good uncommon. Devoted Druid, also a good uncommon. Laboratory Maniac, also a good uncommon. That was a pretty good uncommon pack as well. All right. Spirit Token, very nice. Ooh, Foil Sleight of Hand. I'll take it. I will take it. Now, Foil Sleight of Hand from, like, 7th edition would be even better because it would be black-bordered and foil, right? And our rare is a Talrand. Talrand. The Summoner. I wish you would summon some value. Summon some value, Talrand. How about some Drakes? I mean, yeah, all right. Drakes are value, I guess. Depending on what what game you're playing. Spark Elemental. Foil rare. Second foil rare. And it's a foil thespian stage. It's uh, better than a kick in the teeth, right? Life from the Loam. That's a pretty good rare. That pack was not bad. Foil rare with Life from the Loam. Fiend Hunter. Stinger Fling Spider. And Malevolent Whispers. Whispers. All right. This has to be a heavy-hitting box topper for us to be even close to breaking even on this box, I think. Kodama's Reach foil. Very nice foil. And Back to Basics. All right, we'll take it. Back to Basics is a very good rare as well. I think it's come down quite a bit in price, but hey. Heapdoll, Mahamati Jin, Plume Veil, and that's our uncommons from there. Well, I would say that, like, you know, this box was you know, mediocre. I don't know. I I would say that it probably didn't even beat our second box. I think our second box was probably better than this box. But let's see what this has to say. Let's see what this has to say. What do we think? All right, I will take it. Gorio's Vengeance. I don't know what that's sitting at, but I'm sure it's pretty good. I'm sure it's pretty good. Let's see. What does this thing tell me? What do we got? This is... Oh, I gotta move this junk out of the way. Let's see. Uh, we've got... Ultimate, right? Ultimate Master's Box Toppers. Where are we here? One hundred and thirty-nine, according to this, but that seems wrong because it's actually sitting at about fifty-four dollars on TCG, which is which seems more reasonable to me. The visualizer is definitely needing an update, I would think, but still, fifty-four bucks, I'll take it. I mean, it's not a huge, crazy heavy hitter like Liliana and those other ones, but, like, still. Right? Because, like, what is... Uh... Yes? Because, like, it says Karn is sitting at 363, which is way off. Because it's only 158 on TCG. And Liliana is 250 on TCG, but on the visualizer it's 350. So, I mean, like... I'll take the Gorio's Vengeance though. It's pretty nice. It's it's a it's a sweet card and it's got some sweet new art on it, and I will take it. Um, what do we think? I don't know. 
I have no idea if this box was better than their second box, but it's probably, it's probably close. It's probably close. The first box was definitely the best. I think the third box was still definitely the second best. I think this box was kind of like somewhere near the bottom with the other, with the second box. But overall, still not a bad, you know, I mean, it sucks that we hit the three lands that are like the lower end lands. Stirring Wildwood, I believe, is... Is Stirring Wildwood or Raging Ravine? I can't remember which one it is. I think it's Raging Ravine is worth a couple bucks. I can't remember which one. Um, but one of the two of these is worth like, you know, a couple dollars, and the other two are worth like not even a dollar. Um, so it kind of it kind of unfortunate that we did that, but like, hey, what can you do? We didn't get Creeping Tar Pit or Celestial Colony, which would have been better hits for those land slots. But hey, we did hit three lands in a box, though. Which is, you know, when you think about the master sets, hitting three ba three lands is pretty decent. Like, if we had hit three fetches in a 2017 box, that would be pretty good. That would be pretty good. Normally, I was hitting only, like, one or two in my boxes. So, three would be pretty decent. Anyway, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Ultimate Masters box opening. Don't forget I have a Patreon where you can help support the channel. Uh, where you'll get things like grab bags, booster boxes, bundles, that kind of good stuff um, on a monthly basis. Um, if you want to check it out, there's a link below in the description for the Patreon, or there should be a link at the end of this video that you can just click and it'll take you there. Um, you'll also get your name up in lights at the end of the video. If you can't support with a monetary value, no worries. Thank you for just watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if you could like, share, and subscribe, that would greatly, that would help me greatly. Um, you know, I, it, it feels weird asking for that kind of thing, but like, that's how you can help, um, without having to spend any money. So, thank you so much, everyone, and as always, may your pulls ever be better.